You might have seen this famous photo of a black hole taken by the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration and released in April 2019. But black holes are famously, well, black and no light can escape them. So what actually is the Event Horizon Telescope and how did it manage to image a black hole? The Event Horizon Telescope, or EHT, is actually not a single telescope peering out into space, but rather it's a collaboration of many different radio telescopes across the globe, which all work together to image objects like supermassive black holes in a process called very long baseline interferometry. Even though supermassive black holes are, well, supermassive, from our perspective on Earth, they look incredibly small on the sky. This is just because of how far away they are. EHT has set its sights on imaging the two that look largest to us, and these are the black hole at the centre of our own Milky Way galaxy, called Sagittarius A star, and the black hole at the centre of a galaxy called M87. This black hole in M87 is actually much further away, 55 million light years, but it's also much larger than Sagittarius A star. It's a whopping 6.6 .6 billion times the mass of our sun, and it's easily bigger than our entire solar system, compared to Sag A star's measly 4 million solar masses. All this together means that both of these black holes end up looking approximately the same size on the sky. Still, these black holes are so small from our perspective that to actually see them, we need an incredibly large telescope. One the size of the entire Earth. Since this would be pretty impractical to build, we mimic an Earth-sized telescope by using all of the telescopes of the EHT collaboration, all across the globe, and they all need to look at the same black hole at the same time. Well, as many as possible need to look at the same time. But because they're scattered across the globe, they can't all look in the same direction at the same time. Instead, observations are taken for 12 hours or more, and as the Earth rotates, new telescopes join the effort and start recording data. This mimics having a telescope the size of the entire Earth, admittedly with a few holes in it, and the rotation of the Earth fills in a lot of the gaps and we get a very good resolution image. After several days of data collection, the information from each scope is combined in a very complicated process to give us the images we see here. In order to do this, the clocks at each telescope need to be extremely precise so that the data from each location can be properly synchronized with the data from every other telescope. As such, each site has an extremely precise atomic clock. Each of these clocks will only lose one second every 100 million years or so, providing a global network of clocks that allow our telescopes to be perfectly synchronized. The amount of data recorded by the EHT network is so large that it simply can't be sent over the internet. And instead, it's literally saved to hard disks and physically sent by plane and boat to Massachusetts in the US and Bonn in Germany to be processed. This was actually one of the things that held up the processing of the image for the longest. The data for this image was actually taken in April 2017, but the image wasn't released until 2019. One of the reasons for this is that the South Pole Telescope is part of EHT, and there's actually no flights out of the South Pole between April and October, so the hard disks couldn't get to where they needed to be. The processing was then a very detailed and difficult process, which we won't go into here, but it did lead to this iconic photo of Katie Bowman, scientist at the EHT, and the half ton of hard drives it took to store the five or so petabytes of data for the image. It harks back to this famous photo of Margaret Hamilton with her handwritten code that took humans to the moon. The final picture of the black hole that was obtained is actually the black hole at the center of M87. This is because that black hole is more active than the one in the Milky Way, meaning that it's eating more material and at a faster rate. Dust and gas is falling into the black hole, colliding with other particles as it does so, meaning it heats up and starts to emit radiation and glow. And that's actually how we see the black hole in the image. If there was nothing around the black hole, we wouldn't be able to see it at all because black holes are actually invisible. However, they can leave their shadow on the glowing matter around them, hence the glowing rings and the dark center that is the event horizon shadow. We're seeing the hot matter around the black hole, and it's even possible for us to see the matter that's behind the black hole. The gravitational field is so strong around these supermassive black holes that even light from behind the black hole as we look at it can be bent by the gravity, lensing it towards us and letting us see it. Note that nothing is escaping from inside the black hole. It's impossible for anything to leave the event horizon of a black hole. We're only seeing light that was near, but not inside the black hole. And then we're seeing the shadow of that black hole as well. We also know that this plasma around the black hole in this image is orbiting clockwise, and it takes about two days to complete a single orbit. We can also use this information to confirm the mass of the black hole in this image. And this gives us the 6.5 billion solar masses that I said earlier. The question most people ask about this image is why does it look so blurry? And the answer to that is simply because the black hole is so small on the sky. Resolving it is incredibly difficult. 
It's equivalent to trying to resolve a tennis ball on the moon. Or equally, it's like trying to view a human hair at the level of an electron microscope from 25 miles away. You can see here how a single pixel on the Hubble telescope compares to the EHD image of the black hole. There are ways that EHD can increase the resolution though, mainly through either adding more telescopes to the global network, or the network can also image at shorter wavelengths as well. This image was taken at a wavelength of 1.3 millimeter, and these are nice because they easily travel through the matter around the black hole and through interstellar space. But shorter baselines could also be added to the network to improve the resolution of the telescope. EHD ultimately wants to image the black hole at the center of the Milky Way, Sagittarius A star. And in fact, it took data in 2017 around this black hole at the same time it took the image of M87, but they never released an image. However, rumor has it that one might be released very soon, so do keep an eye out for that if you're watching this video when it comes out. If you're watching this further in the future, then check the links in the description to see if that image has been released and whether I made a video on it. Before I go, just a couple more cool images that EHT has taken. First of all, this is the same M87 black hole, but now it's also showing the polarization of light around the event horizon. The lines show the orientation of the polarization, and this is related to the magnetic field of the black hole. And it also might explain how the M87 galaxy can launch huge energetic jets of energy from its core. Secondly, EHT also imaged the center of Centaurus A, which has a massive black hole and huge jets coming from it as well. The black hole is pretty massive, but it's not big enough for EHT to see a ring around it like it can with M87. But the well collimated beams from the black hole make it an impressive image nonetheless. I hope you're as impressed as I am by the EHT and the black hole images it produces. Hundreds of scientists work in this collaboration, and they gave us the first direct evidence of the existence of black holes, and it gave more confirmation of the correctness of Einstein's general theory of relativity. Let me know down below if you have any questions about any of this stuff, or let me know if the Milky Way black hole image has been released yet if you're in the future. And feel free to subscribe on your way out if you enjoyed the video. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.